hey there gamers! Welcome back to the Iron Maxcape speedrun, Moral Percent. The old school RuneScape speedrun where I'm trying to set the record for the fastest in-game time Maxcape on an Iron account without using alts or boosting or getting any help from another account unless it's necessary to complete the content. You can find a link to the rules in the description. Last week we finished our Guardians of the Rift grind, banking the Abyssal Needle and the outfit for later. We also unlocked Rune Gloves from Recipe for Disaster and clicked a lot of knives, logs, and trees to stack up a big pile of arrow shafts. This week we're back with more farming, and even more old quests that make you do stupidly long activities for no functional reason other than to make me watch the timer tick up while I mine stupid debris in some stupid nerd's stupid basement to complete an aid of the Myrique. And then I put on my eagle fur suit to catch a ferret in a box for Eagle's Peak, then ran to the desert to get a fire making level, and finished the OMG Flesh Eaters for some free prayer XP. I made a quick pit stop in Arceus to pay this guy a stupid amount of money for some magic mushrooms, then reanimated the souls of the dead to kill them again, I guess? I don't know, I'm not a doctor. I then went and had the luckiest bone saving streak at the Chaos Altar with these org bones that I got from Zogar Flesh Eaters, which got me way past the 46 prayer I needed to complete Rum Deal. I also did the Cabin Fever quest to unlock Mostly Harmless, and watch Tower quests so that I could finish the Arty Medium Diary, and then went for a quick run around the map to start completing some Achievement Diaries. I think if you're watching this, you probably understand why diaries are important, but people have some really weird conceptions about how to calculate what is and isn't efficient to do when it comes to OSRS, so I'll talk about it a little bit. A lot of the diaries have you doing things that have nothing to do with the goals you've set, right? Playing many games you don't need things from, or shooting stupid little birds with a terrible bow, all sorts of things that don't help you towards your goal. What that means is we have to know how much time the diary, the quest, whatever we're looking at, saves with its rewards for the future. Usually that's deciding you want 15k Herblor XP, and then that gives you the Rex to do a quest or whatever, so it's worth it to you, but in the case of a speedrun, we have to think a lot more macro. Another thing on top of that is that this is an iron account, obviously. Something being efficient is a much more complex question because of the routing, resource gathering, and management, and the RNG involved in a lot of how you play Iron Man. You might think it's like a solved game mode, but there's a million spreadsheets with iron efficiency rates and calculations all the way from Tutorial Island to 200 mil all, but that's the difference. Efficiency for the macro view of 200 mil all is a lot different than efficiency of a low in-game time Maxcape speedrun. You know, we're not aiming for post-99 XP, and we're especially not using alts, which a lot of the methods do have in their calculations. Like a Crystal Halberd is obviously worth the time it saves getting 200 mil Slayer, especially if you're using it for PVM as well, because you're dealing with such a huge amount of time for it to make a difference. But we aren't doing 3,000 hours of Slayer, we're doing 300. Basically all that to say, I, I've done so much math about DPS and XP rates and zero time XP and all the fun nerdy stuff to come up with a pretty good list of what diary items are worth it, and here's a little list of the ones I've done so far and why. We have the RD Easy and Medium Diary, which is pretty self-explanatory, there's a ton of good things, um, like the Thieving Chance increase, the noted drops from the Tower of Life for Herblower, extra wounds at ZMI, they're all just massive boosts for the time it takes to get them. We have the Desert Easy and Medium Diary, mostly for the future promise of cleaning herbs and making unfinished potions at Zahur with the Hard Diary. I also did the Current Easy Diary for the Rada's Blessing 1, and also to work towards the Ash Sanctifier in the future for a free prayer XP during Slayer. The last one for now is the Fremenic Easy Diary, right now just for the little XP lamp boost, but also for the Fremi Sea Boot teleports and for the future promise of quicker teleports to the Troll Stronghold Herb Patch. Now that isn't all the ones I'm doing, but people seem to like when I explain in more detail the reasoning behind the stuff that's going on, so hey, here you go. With my patience for questing and diaries at an all-time low, I retired to some relaxing will be slayer outing. After all, we're still working towards our first goal of 100 combat, right? So with Slayer, I considered there's two options. Turial skipping for task boosting with whatever lower level master I could use, which is what people consider to be efficient, or Turial skip to get past the first five wilderness tasks, and then print points and GP before I can even get a black mask. Now I don't know about you, but one of those sounds a lot more interesting to me, and I'm not scared of the wildy that places a snooze fast, I swear. I mean, at least for low level slayer. The first five task streak to start earning points is a little RNG, and I did have quite a few Turial tasks to get over that. 
my RNG was a little bad. Other than getting a 9kc basilisk head, of course. But once you get over the 6, 7, 8 task streak, you can basically start skipping and blocking any task you want as long as you don't go too nuts with it. The main goal of the Wildy Slayer was to gain some combat levels, mainly magic, and work towards building up some Slayer points as quickly as possible. The first five tasks, like I said, are hard to get past at a low combat level, but once you get past that, they just they just print. Every task gives you 25 points, it's great. Every task also has a chance of giving you a Laren's Key, which is just a huge boost to the smithing XP, herbler stacks, runecrafting XP, and the cash stack, which is just a huge bonus because GP specifically is going to be very tight for this run. I think people have a lot of misconceptions about Wildy Slayer, because the Wildy makes them think of how high risk the hotspots are. You know, the bosses, black chins, rev caves, places like that. But I've done like 80 wilderness tasks on another account, and I only got PK'd once outside of the rev caves. This isn't because I'm nuts at the game. I mean, I am, but that's not why. It's because the Wildy is essentially empty outside of the hotspots. Sure, you might get some PK or dork who decides it's the right time to own some Iron Man for 30k loot, but you're not on a task for more than an hour, there's tons of worlds, and 90% of PKers don't care about you unless they see you leaving Ferox and you look juicy. What this means is, you're probably missing out. That said, it's only really worth it at the start of Slayer. There's a ton of low-level, very easy tasks that, with a small amount of tutorial skipping, can start paying out points very quickly. And the lower your level, the less PKers can attack you. But even things like mammoths, ice giants, lesser demons, at lower levels if you use the right weapons and pay attention to the minimap of course, are higher XP rates than what's currently EHP. Once you hit 85 combat it's a different story though, being able to use Neve and start getting more barrage and prayer tasks without the risk, it's much more XP per hour. But until then you're going to have a lot of points to spend before you even need them. Anyway, once I hit 60 attack, I took the boat to Port Tyrus to buy something incredibly fun to use the Dragon Halberd. I'm telling you, if you're not using Halberds, you're missing out. You gotta get with the times. These things rule. Now, Revenants aren't exactly efficient, but they're fast. They give free wildy food and potions that I can use for other tasks. They still drop Laren's keys, and there's a chance the RNG gods can shine on you and bless you with a giant pile of money. Sometimes that's dragon plate legs, sometimes it's one mil from a totem that makes life easier for a while, you never know. The rift caves are a little scary, especially without scouts and stuff, but I'm not in there in 30 plus wilderness having to run through tons of prayer. I'm getting a fast task done on low levels that give me a tiny chance of hitting a jackpot while I also build up points incredibly quickly, even with skipping a ton of tasks. Wildy Slayer kind of rules. At this point, I decided to take a little break for some questing to do something a little less uh, prayer flicky for a little bit. And after getting scammed by a very sensitive keyboard button and not being able to stop a golden bowl from being made, I finished between a rock for a free defense level, built a room in my POH just for my pet rock to finish the Fremenic Medium Diary, and then ran back out into Deep Wildy to blast some ice giants. Now I'm not sure why, but I bought a set of proselyte to do a fire giant task. The proselyte makes sense, but it was late and I went a little autopilot and I got a couple of levels on some giants before I remembered where I was and went back to Crystalia to block them. Don't you just love when a gamble pays off? Oh, 
on another brief break from the wilderness, I took a troll to the jungle, suffered through some more painfully slow old quest mechanics to complete my arm's big adventure, and then ran off to the desert to finally start Desert Treasure. Now most of the bosses went off without a hitch, other than the shadow guy who really wanted to see me panic. But I made it out alive, finished the quest, switched my spell book to Ancients, ran over to my guy on the hill to buy an ancient staff, and then got right back to the Wildy Slayer, but this time so much more satisfying. This is why you gotta get into the Halley game. After we hit 58 Slayer and built a little point buffer back up after spending too much on skips and unlocks, we left the Wildee for a birdhouse run, a farm run, and my first Hespori KC, before teleporting to Lumbridge to kill some sentient food minions and then killing some sort of confused food wizard to unlock the bearer's gloves. With our new best in slot gloves, and the main goal being 100 combat of course, the next logical step was obviously to buy a bunch of buckets, go back on what I said in the first episode about my plan not including the Varrock Plague Body, and do the weirdest, most poorly codedest quest in the game to finish the Varrock Medium Diary. And then made my way to the most comfy quarry in all of RuneScape to mine some sand. Now the method I'm doing here, shout out to my guy Trisk for teaching me this. It's called 3S1G because of the part where you mine 3 sand and 1 granite. You drop the granite, as well as the 1 kilogram sandstones. Basically 75% of the time you're mining sand and 25% of the time you're mining granite. It adds up to more mining XP per hour, which you can never really complain about, and the lack of running while mining compared to doing just 4 sand like most people do means you have a pretty low deficit of run energy even at low agility levels. At higher levels it's positive and you don't even need energy potions, it's pretty cool. It's pretty simple once you get the rhythm down, like most tick manipulation stuff. Just find the camera angle that works for you, mine until you're full of sand, click the sandstone grinder on the minimap and zoom out to click it, and then go back, zoom in, and repeat. It's a little annoying with water skins to be honest, but having things filling inventory slots does make it easier to drop the things I need to while doing the method, so I guess it balances out a little bit. After we got our mining levels, we ran off to the Fremenic province to fall asleep and fall over what seems like an unhealthy amount of times to finish off Lunar Diplomacy, then made myself a pile of teletabs for the future, and made my way back to the quarry to finish the sand I needed for 75 crafting. And that's where I'll leave you this time, folks. I'll put my stats and bank from the end of this episode on screen and show you last episode's stats to compare it to if you'd like to see. I feel like we're finally getting into some content I can actually talk about, more than just listing quests I'm doing and showing you early game dopamine level spam that we're all used to, so hopefully the videos will start to be even more interesting for you. Also new mic, how's it sound? I think it's pretty good. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye!